It's good to be back here with you after a little bit of a break, and I will have more to tell you about that some point soon. But in the meantime, I'm excited to let you know about this week's episode. So what if you could embrace conflict in your relationship and actually turn it into a profound vehicle for your own inner growth? There are clues in every single conflict that will show you exactly where your edges are. And once you see them, it lights the way for your development. That's what's in store for you on today's show. Meanwhile, if you are near Portland, Maine, or feel like coming, don't miss our live show featuring John and Julie Gottman, who will be joining me this Saturday night, October 12th, at the State Theater in Portland, Maine. Uh, And this is... 2019, just in case you were confused, you'll get a chance to spend the evening with the world's relationship masters and get your questions answered. For more information or to buy tickets, visit neilsatin.com slash live show. I just want to say that Relationship Alive would not be possible without your generous support. So if you're finding the show to be helpful for you or people you love, please consider a donation to ensure that we can continue. Just visit neilsatin.com slash support or text the word support to the number 33444 and choose something that feels right for you. Every little bit counts. And this week, I would like to thank Anne, Monica, Angie, Barrett, Cynthia, Sarah, Maribeth, Kent, Sarah, and Michelle. Thank you all so much for your generous contributions to the podcast and our mission. Meanwhile, if you're looking for some help with the communication in your relationship, and I'm just noticing I'm saying meanwhile a lot or in the meantime, so am I feeling mean? I'm not really sure. Not tonight. I'm actually in a pretty good mood. So if you are looking for help with the communication in your relationship, take a moment to download my free guide to my top three relationship communication secrets. If you put these three things into action, you will be well on your way to communicating about anything, no matter how challenging, while still staying connected with your partner. Just visit neilsatin.com slash relate or text the word RELATE to the number 33444 and follow the instructions. And lastly, if you are looking to connect with a supportive community of Relationship Alive listeners, come join the Relationship Alive community on Facebook, where we've created a safe space to talk about relationships. And you can also connect with Relationship Alive on Instagram. Okay, that's it. Let's get on with the show. Hello and welcome to another episode of Relationship Alive. This is your host, Neil Satin. We've talked a lot on the show about how to communicate, and we've dipped our toes into the water of how to, how to have conflict in a productive way with your partner. But deep down... I don't know about you, but I've always harbored this sense that conflict is best avoided or dealt with as quickly as possible. And yet, despite that deep down held belief, something in me knew that it wasn't quite right. It wasn't quite serving me. And I've had various attempts to put my finger on the reason why. And then good fortune brought today's guest my way. Her name is Viola Neufeld, and she is the author of Grateful for the Fight, Using Inner Conflict to Transform Yourself and Your Relationships. Her book is truly eye-opening in terms of helping you see how the conflicts that you have in your outer world, the conflicts with your partner, with your family, with your coworkers or your boss, how all of those conflicts help point to the ways that you can grow within you and transform your relationships. So it's a very powerful, generative way of looking at conflict that almost makes you welcome the chance to have conflict with someone else because you're going to be holding it in a completely different way. If you are interested in downloading a transcript for today's episode, you can visit neilsatin.com slash 
conflict, because that's what we're going to be talking about today. Or as always, you can text the word passion to the number 33444 and follow the instructions. Vi Neufeld, thank you so much for being here with me today on Relationship Alive. Oh, I'm so happy to be here. And I really love the name of your uh, your podcast, Relationship Alive, because that's what this whole thing is about. It's about um, what do you need to do to keep relationships alive over a very lengthy period of time. And um, I know, you know, you were talking about um, how our natural tendency is to want to avoid conflict. And, you know, that just makes all the sense in the world, because think about each time you enter conflict, it's like you're on this teeter-totter and you don't know which way it's going to go. Is it just going to keep getting worse or is there a chance that this time you're going to turn around and do it differently and do it better? Um, but we, most of us have such a track record already with things going badly that we're frightened of starting it again because we know what the chances are. We're realistic about the opponent that we have. And um, our opponent gives us a real run for our money because they're able to find those uh, places within where we question ourselves. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's funny, eh? We often say um, to our partner, you know, you're pushing my buttons as though they shouldn't. But interestingly enough, it's when, um, it's when they push our buttons that they take us right to that part of ourselves where we find that really restless part. And of course, it makes us feel terrible. We don't want to stay there because we're, we're uncomfortable there already. Um, and yet, if we continue to avoid it, then it just remains there in a chronic state for many, many years. And we keep having fights over and over, um, just on a little bit of a different stage. But the underlying fight is actually very much the same. Right. You talk about it basically being this cycle where each of you is poking at the other's sore spots and that there there's some way that we magically arrive at this dynamic in in partnership around those perpetual fights where what they point to it hits us in our in our weakest most vulnerable places and then we in the way that we respond to them you call that your mo um it does the exact same thing for them and so it creates this vicious cycle that just gets worse and worse or never gets any better <laughs> yeah I, I don't know i was thinking about this yesterday i was thinking about the whole concept of chemistry and you know how we always talk about um we w w what is love and we have to have this uh thing that happens between us they activate something inside us and make us come alive uh, but then what I was really thinking about is, um, like, what is the chemistry, the very thing that draws you together, that gravitational pull, um, um, often has something that also creates conflict between us. I mean, we love somebody because they activate that part of us that somebody else doesn't, and it gets us really, really excited. But it also makes us makes us just wild because we don't know what to do, and we end up trying to sort through while we're in the middle of it. Um, this is where it gets really confusing. What's your stuff and what's my stuff? But, but Neil, let me go back to that um, cycle that you were referring to, because how I even came up to, with that and how I even um, you know, started looking at things in relation to the book and writing things up was at one point I had like about 23, no, no, it was even more than that, it was at least 30 different files that I had across my dining room table and I thought, what are the similarities here? When do people get into such um, entanglements with each other that they just can't get out? And are there some similarities? What are those similarities where people get stuck and stay stuck for years? And then that's when I started, when I came up with that uh, cycle and you realize that somebody in terms of what they say or what they do, um, maybe they're critical, maybe they're passive, maybe they withdraw, but whatever it is they do, make you go back to the place where you question yourself. Maybe I'm not enough, 
or maybe I'm too controlling, or maybe I'm too impatient, or whatever it is that either they're withdrawing or um, or their attack makes you question yourself and and doubt yourself at very significant levels in terms of who you are as a person. Then when you come out, so you come back out fighting, and whatever it is you do makes the other person now question themselves and face the part of themselves that they don't want, that unwanted self. And um, it's, it's looking at how we feed that cycle and keep that cycle going that I was really intrigued by and wondering how do people get out of that cycle? Because I think that so many of us live with more pain in life than we need to. Like if we could figure this out sooner and face the part of ourselves that causes such discomfort, and we'll know, we'll recognize that part because it's always the part that makes us come out fighting. We have to defend ourselves, we have to protect ourselves because we think the other person said something that makes us look like an idiot or that we're unreliable or that we're not a contributor, all the things we don't want to be. And that's when we come out fighting. And yet, the interesting thing is that really the strange way out of that is to face the very thing that you don't want to be. Like for me, for a long time, one of the things I had to face was um, I'm not enough. And I would keep thinking, no, I am enough. Well, this is where the power of positive thinking doesn't always work because it can't wipe out truth. And mm. so it's like you almost have to do a back and forth and go, where am I, where am I enough and where am I not enough? Because there are places where I'm not enough. And what am I going to do about that? So then the hope lies in kind of finding um, a bit of a manageable change uh, program. And if I can do more today than I did yesterday or feel better today about myself than I did yesterday because of what I'm doing differently, then that's already growth. I mean, it's one of the things I absolutely love about um, conflict. I never like to be in the midst of conflict. There's nothing easy about it. Um, but if you can surrender to it and learn what you can, then we, we, we learn so much more about ourselves. I think that we are all um, less self-aware than we really think we are. And so this is a wonderful way of getting to know who you are and who the other person is. Yeah, there's there's so much here that I want to unpack, and um, and I love how rich your book is with like really taking apart each of the dynamics that that are at work there in in conflict. And as um, as I was wrestling with this question of okay, what is the truth about those sore spots in me? You know, when I look at you know something I mentioned frequently on the podcast is how I'm maybe not the cleanest person. Um, so what is the truth around when, when someone approaches me or when Chloe, my partner approaches me and says like, you know, this place is a disaster. Like you have to, you have to do something. And for me, like the natural tendency being, you know, all these things that I saw spelled out in your book, like I would get defensive or I'd have, I just have excuses. Maybe I wasn't getting defensive, but I'd be like, you know, I was really busy recording that episode of the podcast and huh. I didn't get that chance to do the dishes. Like I said, I was going to, um, yeah. and, and then there's that uncomfortable place of recognizing okay, there is some truth here. And um, one of the questions that comes up for me is uh, how you arrive at the balance of when it's actually healthy for you to look at, let's say, a criticism from your partner and to not like focus on the fact that they criticized you and they could have said it better, but just to say, like, all right, I'm going to take a step back and see what's true here. What's the balance between doing that in a way that's healthy and then it becoming its own negative cycle in your relationship where you just get victimized by a partner who isn't doing their part to shift? Yeah, that's a really good question. Because, you know, I think it's almost like the sequence that's the most important. The natural tendency is to go back and start fighting 
immediately or, or protecting and defending self, except that if you continue to do that, it gets you nowhere, okay? Um, so the first step is always going in and looking at what did they say about me so that's true. Maybe I, you know, I am messy or I am a control freak or I'm a clean freak or whatever it is. Whatever they have said about you, the first step, I mean, this is a, that's a very courageous step, right? Because you have to go inside and you go, how much of that is true? Um, and once you start to look at that, then you're no longer fighting or, or like pushing it away because you've actually brought it close. And I don't ever want to minimize the difficulty of this because the same way as a child bounces down on, on heat and pulls their hand away, we do the same thing with emotional responses. When something is uncomfortable, we want to bounce away. But this is what is required is to actually stay there longer and go, is this true about me? Yeah, you know what? Sometimes I am this way. Um, or sometimes I'm not this way. So you're, you're going back. You have to do a bit of an assessment all along, recognizing that you don't see everything about yourself. The other person is actually telling you something about how you are impacting them. And we're not always aware of our full impact on the other. But then after you've gone in, I think then it's important to go up. And you, um, from a bird's eye view, you look down and you go, wait a minute, what do I know about the way that the two of us interact? What do I know about when my partner's feeling uncomfortable? What do they do? And if they get to a place where they're blaming and um, I'm now feeling like a victim, and this is, I, I recognize this, this is I easily fall into a victim, my partner easily blames, then I go, wait a minute, what, um, I've already looked at what's going on inside of me and what I need to do differently, but now I'm also from the bird's eye view, from way up top, I'm looking down and going, I see this pattern between us, and I know that my partner is doing that out of their own discomfort. Then, because you're not being um, just reactive, you are much more equipped to stand up and say, you know what, you're going into a blamer and you're doing the very same thing again. You're wanting to make it look like it's my fault. And you're so, so it's a matter then of um, holding on to yourself and you are not as reactive. So you have a, a clearer mind and you can see what the pattern is between the two of you and begin to shift your pattern. Right. I loved in one of the chapters where you were talking about ways to shift the interactions, like once you've done the inner work. And I want to spend, of course, a little bit more time on that process of of the inner diagnosis. Um, but you were talking about like once you've done that work and you and then you face into a conflict with your partner um, or anyone, really, um, you might ask a question like, are you, are you, it seems like you're trying to blame me right now. Are you, is that true? Are you, are you trying to blame me right now for what's going on? And how asking the question invites them to take a deeper look at what they're doing. And they may say, they may say, yes, you know, they may, they may be like, that's exactly what I'm doing because this is your fault. Or they may say, well, I'm not trying to blame you. I'm trying to just show you the impact of, and you, and you get, you get further than you would get if you were just like, you know, stop blaming me and you're always blaming me. And, and then you're off to the races with your typical relationship pattern or conflict pattern. <laughs> yeah. See, I love that because once you have looked at yourself and you've really seen it, um, when you go out now, because I think there's three steps you go in you go up and then you go out. When you go out, you go out very differently. So um, my husband and I, we had this uh, cycle that went on for many, many years. And um, and it would be that I would end up feeling like I was, uh, you know, how, how did I have to raise another issue? I'm a malcontent. I, I'm a flake for what I'm saying. And, um, and then what I noticed, and I would go into a blamer, um, because I didn't want to be that person. But once I got to see that when I experienced his criticism, I would go to that very same place. It, it kind of just made me chuckle because I go, wait a minute, I'm here at the same place. 
And yes, I realize that um, sometimes I cause trouble, but I also don't want to be the person who sees trouble and doesn't do anything about it. So then I was equipped to just stand there and go, no, no, we do have an issue with this, uh, but I got to find a way of doing this and be lovable at the same time. So, so going inside, what it helps you do is it equips you and you feel more confident to stand on your own, to speak from your truth. And the fight changes because it's not like you're just defending yourself. You're actually talking about what goes on between the two of you and what you'd have to do to change the pattern so that it becomes a healthier pattern. Yeah, let's go Let's go up even further for a minute and talk about uh, differentiation and the reason why conflict is so crucial for true intimacy. Yeah, differentiation, I mean, it sounds like a big concept, but... Um, but it's so it's what you have to do in conflict all the time is that um, and conflict takes you to a place where you have to be willing to stand on your own and for for a little bit I mean it's almost like you disconnect with that other person because you're so uh, connected with who you are what's important to you and then um, but you also have to hold the other at the same time. So it's being detached and involved, um, standing alone and standing together. A lot of people get that part confusing because they think that, um, you know, they'll say, I mean, many couples will come in and one person will say, no, I, I have to leave this marriage because I can't be myself. Well, if you have to leave a marriage to be yourself, that's not differentiation, it's individuation. That's about you being able to hold on to yourself. Differentiation is much more difficult. It's because how do you end up holding on to yourself and being a full self uh, when you're connected to the other who is different than you, who thinks differently, who wants different things? And that can be a big challenge. But ultimately, I think it's only when we bring our full selves to the marriage and freely be who we are, even when the other person doesn't get who we are. That's our best, um, our, our, that's the best chance that we've got of having real intimacy and vitality. I think way too many people um, give up intimacy because intimacy is hard. Intimacy means that you have to be able to stay um, what you want, what's important to you, what you value, even when you think that the other person doesn't get it. So one of the ways that I've described it over the years is that I, I think one of the hazards of a long-term relationship is a, is a shrinking pie. And initially you came together and the two of you were, you flowed freely and you were all, you brought all of what you, what you are. And so it, when you bring the full pie, it just feels really intoxicating because you're free to be yourself. The other person is free to be yourself. You don't have the baggage. But then what happens over years is that let's say there's something that's really important to you. Maybe it's something um, that you value. Maybe it's, it's what you want sexually or who you are spiritually or, um, you know, what you're looking, what you need emotionally. And let's say the other person isn't there, doesn't meet your needs. And so, or even they think you're, um, you're, I don't know, they think you're less than for some reason because you're too emotional or not emotional enough or, or whatever. And so slowly we start pulling back pieces of the pie and we no longer bring them to the relationship. And if we don't do that, sure, we've got less conflict. But you know what? We have a whole lot less vitality, a whole lot less intimacy. So the challenge is, even when you don't, we don't think the same, I got to tell you, this is who I am. And remember, the other person fell in love with you in the first place because you so freely flowed with who of everything that you were. But just now you've got some challenges. Yeah. So the so the idea is that through this process, you get to know yourself more, you get to grow yourself more, and then you get to bring that back to the conflict in a way that that really 
it's like having the same conflict, but from a completely different place. So it's, it's not going to be the same conflict, at least on some level. And that's true because you, once, once you've done all this inside work, you go and, and as soon as you get back out there with the same person, you go, wow, this is the same stuff. But then you notice that it actually feels so differently when you're in it because you're not being triggered. So the same conflict, but now you do, you're do um, you responding differently within it, which means that um, nothing can be exactly the same. You know how they tell you, you can never change the other person. And there's a part of that that's true, but it really isn't the whole truth, you know, because um, how do we change the other person? We change the other person by changing ourselves. If I change my pattern, my husband could no longer do the same thing. And that's the way it is in all relationships. And therein lies a huge amount of hope. Yeah. And in fact, I just released a communication course that is all focused on the things that one person can do. Like yeah. basically all the places where we alone have influence when we're communicating with another person, since that's really the only thing we can change in effect. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and also because like I think of, um, I don't know if you can visualize steps, you know, like let's say you you enter at one level, but there was an action that came before. There's always an action that comes after. So think about how you change things because if you respond differently, then the other responds differently to you as well. And you get out of a vicious cycle and into a more virtuous cycle and the power lies in one. Right. Right. I am, I'm getting this image in my mind of, you know, someone kind of going to battle and over and over again with the same opponent, the same foe. And they have, I mean, let's just use Achilles, right? So that we'll take a, a, a myth. So this dude has a weakness in his heel. It's the only place that he can be killed because that was where, you know, he was held when he was dipped into the the pool of immortality or whatever it was. Um, and it's like he imagine him going into battle again and again, and he's like fighting and all um, doing well. And then what do you know? Like the person like pinches his heel and he's, and he's like down on the ground again. And thankfully the person isn't actually trying to kill him, but, um, but no matter what, there he is helpless down on the ground. And it's like if all he focuses on is like, how do I keep people away from my heel? Then the heel is always going to be there as a weakness and yeah. everyone's going to keep going for it. Whereas if he gets to know that spot yeah. intimately well, and, yeah. you know, I'm talking about Achilles, but it could easily be Achillea, you know, some woman as well, you know, like <laughs> um, then once they realize like, oh, this is my weakness and they really get to know it intimately. And then when the other person goes for it, they actually have a, res a, a way of responding that they never had before. That's yeah. part of what changes the whole dynamic. So I'm wondering if you can talk for a moment about that process of going in. And, and I love the way in your book you have these great questions that help you kind of peel away your self delusions and denial in a way that's not destructive, you know, that's constructive. Maybe you can talk a little bit about that process of, you know, asking yourself, maybe you've asked yourself what's true about this, which is what you offered earlier. And then what's the next step? Like what, where do you go with when you, when you realize like, well, you know what? I, it's true that I don't prioritize the dishes <laughs> that is just true about me or whatever it is. Yeah, you know, uh, even to go one step further back, because um, it's understanding. You know, I often think of that part of us that we don't like, the unwanted self. I often think of that more, and I, res I relate to it as I would to a little child or to me as a little child, because we all make sense. And that part of us that still needs healing was wounded somewhere along the line. And what I actually love about conflict is that conflict gives us a method um, to heal those parts that are the most sensitive. So, so when we come to the self, to the unwanted self, in that way, and we warmly try to understand where the hurts lie, 
where the woundedness first started to show up. Um, then it's a way of uh, kind of, I don't know, embracing it really. It, it really is, I don't know, taking it on your lap. And now you're not, um, you're not, you're not harsh with it, which means you're also not unrealistic in what you're expecting of it. So I understand that, okay, why did, why is cleanliness not important to me? Or why is uber cleanliness important to me, for instance? And I come to understand things that have happened in my life that have made me come to that conclusion. And the thing is that many times what worked earlier in life doesn't necessarily work anymore. Um, so it, taking the, the cleanliness thing, you know, before it was not a problem. There were many other things that were more important. However, if it becomes a problem with your spouse, then, then yeah, then it's something that you start looking at and you go, well, maybe, I, maybe now I would actually feel better if I had things a little more cleaned up or if I contributed more by getting the dishes done or any of those things. So, um, so it's a matter of, of really first warming up to the unwanted self because you understand what, um, what role it played or how it came to be. And in facing that, there is some healing um, and there's some freeing going forward. Yeah, and I'm wondering when you look at yourself in that way, like what I'm hearing are these questions that help you get at the underlying motivation. So if what you're looking at is a specific behavior that you do or don't do, what the motivations are beneath that to help you get more clarity on what what's really driving the way that you act. Am I getting you? Yes, for sure. Um, because we always have, and, and making that connection is sometimes difficult. Um, because uh, we have these behaviors that we do, but then you have to kind of go underneath and go, why, why, why is that important? Now, the, the, the why question is always a bit dangerous, right? Because it can take you into rationalization, which is not where we're going. It's more of a question of what, what is it that's actually driving that? Um, so, yeah, and I'm thinking about your chapter on, I think you call it self-tripping. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe you can describe what that is before I say what I'm going to say. What, so what, what's self-tripping? Um, self-tripping is when you uh, keep doing something that you know isn't, isn't getting you where you want to go, and yet you can't, leave, you can't let it go. So in the book, it was um, Nadia and her negativity. And so she recognizes that even though she doesn't like her negativity, that it also plays an important role in her life. It's where she feels like she makes a valuable contribution. Um, it's part of her sense of identity. She thinks that people who just are always happy are people who just skate through life and don't have enough grit to face reality as it is. And it's so become woven into her sense of who she is that if she, if she didn't uh, be negative some of the time or, or you know, bring out the umbrella, um, that she wouldn't even know who she was anymore. Right. Because the role, it was a role that she played growing up in her family, and it's how others have come to know her. Vi, we need to take a quick break to mention today's sponsors. Our first sponsor for today is Noemi, and they have a special offer just for you as a Relationship Alive listener on their exquisite jewelry. If Amazon Prime and Tiffany's had a baby, it would be Noemi. Their pieces are meant to last a lifetime, perfect for today, and an heirloom that your family will treasure far into the future. Noemi is handcrafted in the finest materials, reclaimed 18 karat gold, so it's good for the environment, conflict-free stones, and lab-grown diamonds, and it's all priced as fairly as possible because they cut out the middleman. Also, they ship to you overnight for free so that you can try your jewelry on and have up to 60 days to return it for free with a full refund. So trying something from their site to see how it feels on you is completely risk-free. It's a super easy experience. 
I also love how easy they make it to let someone know exactly what items you'd like with their drop a hint feature on their website, which makes Noemi perfect for gift giving without worrying about something tacky showing up on your door. It's something I particularly appreciate them. Their jewelry is so unique, and you can tell just how much care they put into creating it as soon as you open the box and try it on. You can literally feel the quality under your fingertips. And as I mentioned, they have a special offer for you as a Relationship Alive listener. Head to hellonoemi.com. That's the word hello, followed by N-O-E-M-I-E dot com. And use the coupon code ALIVE for $75 off your order today. That's $75 off with the coupon code ALIVE at hellonoemi.com. Our second sponsor for today has a special offer for you to help you get exactly the kind of support that you need as you're creating that web of support for yourself that we often talk about here on the show. And that can be such an important component of taking care of yourself and handling the conflict that you might be going through in your relationship. So one way that you can connect with a professional counselor in an online environment that's safe and private is today's sponsor, BetterHelp. With BetterHelp, you can get help on your own time and at your own pace. Along with scheduling video or phone sessions, you can also chat and text with your therapist. They're affordable, and financial aid is available for those who qualify. So whether it's anxiety, depression, your relationship, your conflict, stress, grief, dealing with trauma, anything, simply figuring out how to communicate what you need to communicate, whatever it is, definitely consider BetterHelp as a way to help you transform your stuck places. And best of all, it's a truly affordable option because as a Relationship Alive listener, you get 10% off your first month with the discount code ALIVE. So why not get started today? Go to betterhelp.com slash alive. Simply fill out the questionnaire to help them assess your needs and get matched with a counselor that you'll love. That's betterhelp.com slash alive. Our final sponsor today is Audible. What would it look like if we just all listened more? You're here listening to Relationship Alive, of course, and along with podcasts, listening to audiobooks can motivate you, inspire you, and bring you closer together with the people that you love. Audible has the largest selection of audiobooks on the planet, and now, with Audible Originals, the selection has gotten even better with custom content made for members like you. Sometimes when you're living life on the go, an Audible book can be a great way to learn about something new or improve your relationship skills by listening when you're commuting or simply getting the dishes done. So many of the books that we've featured here on the podcast are also available on Audible, so it's an easy way to dive deep on something that can truly enhance your life. Start listening with a 30-day Audible trial. Choose one audiobook and two Audible originals absolutely free. Visit audible.com slash relationship or text relationship to the number 500-500. That's audible.com slash relationship or text the word relationship to the number 500-500 for your free 30-day Audible trial, which gives you one audiobook and two Audible originals absolutely free. Hey, I'm just going to go through these questions that you ask. Sure. Yeah. Um, so just to give you uh, listening a flavor for, for this kind of inquiry. Um, so you identify the behavior, then you might ask yourself, why do you dislike this behavior? Because after all, we're talking about the unwanted self. Like this is a part of us that we don't necessarily feel good about, but we, we've we come to accept it as just maybe just the way we are or just the way we're going to be. We, we haven't figured out a way out of it. Um, what do you like about this behavior and why are you attached to it? Um, if you tried to change it, what would you lose or how would the change destabilize you internally or destabilize your relationship externally? And how is it working for you to repeat this pattern over and over again? Is there anything else that holds it in place? So you're really able to, to look at it like almost a, a scientist would, or at least an observer, you know, from another planet who's really trying to get 
more familiar with what's what's going on here and do you find that that process of creating that insight in itself is what generates change or are there other things that you think are required for people well for sure what it does like it's the second step right it's of going up and looking at it so what it does is um you see the patterns it loosens it loosens it inside and then i think um the going out is actually that you have to end up um, implementing that and realize that realize how different it feels and actually be surprised by how good it feels and it doesn't mean that like nadia for instance might never give up um, all her negativity but she might be thinking differently about how often she's going to use it or whether it's going to be a comfortable blanket she's going to recognize when she's using it illegitimately and she'll open up options that's the whole beautiful thing about looking at um in or engaging conflict differently is that you recognize that you have a whole lot more options than you believed you had earlier yeah yeah it really frees you up in that in that way and uh I'm just thinking about how once you're in that place with with a new, like trying something new on, um, you talk about not necessarily going for the big shift. Well, I'm just going to be positive all the time. Like that's not going to be Nadia's approach, right? No, no. no it, I mean, it has to be. It has to be little, little steps. And I think you always measure today compared to yesterday. Are you happier with? who you are today than yesterday. Um oftentimes when I work with couples and I usually take the last 10 minutes to uh work on what what kind of homework do they want to do and it's about together we figure out the homework or they figure out the homework on their own. But oftentimes after a session people will be um pretty motivated and they'll go oh I'm going to do this 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 and this and I'm going um, how about how about we think about one thing you're going to do so that you can um be convinced so that you know that you are going to actually succeed rather than setting yourself up for failure. Yeah. Yeah, and and I there I'm thinking now of that uh way of reflecting on changes in conflict with another person that you mentioned where you might even say it's like in Nadia's case like wow when's the last I was just positive like when's the last time I was positive in the middle of a conflict that we were having as <laughs> yeah. a as a way of helping your partner see that you are trying to make shifts in the dynamic when you yeah. when you are trying to make those shifts what yeah. are the what are the common obstacles that you find when someone brings kind of a renewed sense of who they are they've gone they've done the deep dive they've gone up they've gotten some perspective they they really want to shift this pattern for themselves and for the way that they have conflict and then let's let's talk about kind of taking it into the arena with their <laughs> with their partner and how do you do that in a way that's most likely to be generative and and how would you know because we're talking about stepping into conflict which by its nature is uncomfortable yeah yeah you know what i i think for one be really realistic about change and how it happens and know that um the old is like a magnet and it just sucks you back so quickly and so powerfully and i think the important thing is not to get down on ourselves when that happens um just to kind of look and kind of chuckle a little bit and go oh my goodness it it's happening the same thing still has some power um but even the fact that you can go up and recognize it that means you're not functioning totally from your uh, alligator brain your amygdala you're actually operating you've invited your neocortex in and you're recognizing it Um even if you catch it after the fact and you go you know what I just did the same thing again but that's more than you were doing previously because previously you didn't even see it so kudos to you um and then the next time when it happens you'll probably see it while you're in the middle of it and go okay just wait a minute I got to do something differently and when when sometimes when people get lost I'll say to them um just do something which is 180 degrees from what you normally do and see how different it feels and see what the impact is because it's all about 
experimenting. Um, and then recognizing that the person who got to you before, when you are making changes, whether it's your spouse, whether it's um, a colleague at work, if you make a change, know that the other person is going to um, continue to do more of what, uh, what they did before. So they're actually going to up the ante. Be prepared for that. Not because they're wanting you to do, still do what you did before, but just because that's what they know. And so your commitment is to yourself more than to the other person to stay the course, to know who and fo just focus on who do I want to be so that I can uh, sleep comfortably in my own skin. And what, I, what is another good thing is that um, life keeps giving us one opportunity after another. If we miss this one, there's another one right around the corner. And again, <laughs> you can just keep practicing on being the person we want to be. Yeah, yeah, I like the um, that image of your two brains learning how to work together. Mm -hmm. um, because we have spoken a lot on the show about your your limbic brain taking your your neocortex offline, basically for in favor of fight or flight. And so bringing your um, attunement, like your attunement within to yeah. a conflict that allows you to to uh, bring them both online at the same time. And to recognize your boundaries, to recognize where you truly aren't safe versus um, the illusion of not being safe, which is often what your amygdala is responding to, right? Yeah. And, and that's what I love is because when you invite your brain back in, you can see that some of the things, because conflict is all about your threat center going wild. Um, and yet when you bring your, your neocortex in, then you can actually look at those fears and go, okay, they were real at one point. Are they still real? You know, I thought I couldn't do this on my own. And back then I couldn't, but can I do it now? Have I developed further? Or I thought that, you know, I was not enough. Or I thought that I spoke way too much. Do I still do that? Um, I thought I was a drama queen. Am I still that or have I shifted? Um, I thought people would reject me. Um, but is that true? So, yeah, it's always a question of, of checking where you are now compared to where you were then. And the, the many of the fears that were there don't need to be there any longer. Let's talk for a minute, too, about how we might because I, I agree with you that so often we we start changing and the whole thing shifts but are there ways that you find with your clients that are particularly effective for inviting your partner to notice i'm um, along uh, apart from what i mentioned earlier um to notice like hey the dance is shifting here or hey like this is this is me stating my truth and you can be in. You can make a choice about that, but I'm really clear about what I believe in this moment or who I am in this moment. Um, what are some ways to help uh, invite your partner to change their steps in the dance? And and maybe the last part of that question is, how would someone recognize if that wasn't going to happen, and whether or not that's truly. Yeah. You, you talk a little bit about the times when it's actually healthy to disengage. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, because, you know, I mean, here's the sobering thing is that we only have in our life what we tolerate. And so at a certain point, it is that we go, this is who I am, or I want to be sexually active. And that's really important to me in an intimate relationship. And if you're not there, if, if that's not what you want, we're, we're in real difficulty and I don't know what to do. Or, or let's say, um, I, I want to be in a relationship with somebody when I know that I have reason to trust them and I can believe them. And you have shown me on numerous occasions that I don't have evidence to trust you. And we're re we, we are in a, in a situation that, um, I don't know if we can continue to go forward because this is what I need in my life. See, then you go back to differentiation where you really hold your own and you go, this is what I need from a partner. 
Um, and, and if you're not that person, then I don't know where we're going to be in the future. So there, and, and then there are other ones where let's say, you know, you know that, um, when you're, that the other person continues, like regardless of how many times you say what's important to you and what really matters, it actually seems like the other person, um, if they really, if that really doesn't matter to them, then you are in a situation where you have to go, okay, am I going to um, continue on with this person or am I not? Um, because you can't continue, or let's say somebody continues to be um, hurtful and harmful in their actions towards you. And regardless of what you said, they don't make the changes. Well, then the writing is on the wall as to your future. You have to make decisions for your own safekeeping and for your own health going forward. Yeah, and I, I think one place where that can get tricky is I think we can be too quick maybe to make that decision if we're in pain. And that's the interesting thing about what we're talking about is like, just because you're having conflict and uncomfortable, that that isn't necessarily a sign that this isn't a healthy environment for you to be in. It may be that there's more healing for you to do or more growing for you to do. Um, and I think that can be tricky to know, like, actually, this isn't about me growing or healing something. This is just about kind of a core place where I stand. Yeah, I mean, that's where it, get, it can get confusing for people um, to know whether it's just there, it's theirs um, or if it has to do with the other person. And I'm wondering if you have any hints for how someone can do that diagnosis about, like, have they have they gone deep enough in terms of their own inner work? Yeah. So Neil, I know what it was I was going to say Great. because it's it's um, what's the reason for moving on? So if you have not looked at your own stuff and you just think it's the other person, then maybe moving out of the relationship is premature. If, however, you've actually looked at your part of the problem, your contribution, and still you you're not getting from your partner what you need then that's a different thing because you're not just um, leaving because of hurt and because of self-blindness you actually see it you're doing the work and uh, but the other person is not in a place where they're wanting to see more of themselves and and then then maybe it uh, it, it points to a different future but it's why why are you leaving like do you, have you really seen what you need to see about yourself? Because then you can make a clear decision. Right. I, I love what you just said, how crucial it is to identify your contribution and to change, to address that. Um, yeah. That that's, that is what we've been talking about all along. It, it's um, the ways that we show up and we create the dance that's happening or do our part to create the dance that's happening. Yeah. Well, Vi Neufeld, it's been so great to chat with you ab about conflict. And I feel like we should have argued more or something like that. But <laughs> um, really appreciating your work. And so can you can you just tell us a little bit more about the different kinds of things that you offer? Obviously, your book Grateful for the Fight is there for people on Amazon. It's a it's a great read and, and really a useful tool for for self discovery and, and transforming your approach to conflict and and I don't know about you but if you can imagine like how tense and um inner how much it can shake up your inner world to know that you're heading into conflict and just how different it can be to imagine stepping into a conflict knowing that you've got you and that you yeah. can take care of yourself yeah. this book is a really helpful uh part of creating that experience so I appreciate your work in that way um, yeah. What else are you doing with people? Well, I was just going to say, and I think one of the, the real benefits of doing this work is that you end up liking yourself more and you have better relationship. That's, that's the end result. Um, so, yes, you know, if you um, other things, I mean, there's all kinds of work. It's always having to do with um, sorting through relationships and extended families and um, with couples and in organizations um, if some of you want to 
have a little scale that you can work through um, and the, it would be a little handout on enhancing relationship vitality. Uh, if you want to do that, you can contact me and I'll, I'll send you a concept or I'll send you a, um, a handout if you like to do that. It would be a way of, um, you know how you always have ideas about uh, how you, who you think you are in relationship and then who your partner is. This is a way of actually going through a number of indicators and you can do a scoring at the end, which will tell you, you know, um, it'll, it'll shine some light on who's contributing in what areas and see if your self perceptions are accurate or not. Well, I'm definitely going to, to take your quiz. So we'll make sure that, that I get, get my hands on that as well. Um, yes. If you want to get a, a copy of the enhancing your relationship vitality, uh, inventory, then you can visit Vi Newfeld's website, which is transpectives.com. And I will have a link to that in the show notes, uh, which you can get by visiting neilsatin.com slash conflict or texting the word passion to the number 33444 and following the instructions. Vi Newfeld, thank you so much for being here with us today. It's been such a treat to chat with you. Thanks so much, Neil. Thank you for listening to another episode of Relationship Alive. If you like what you've heard and want to make it easier for other people to find out about us, please take a moment to subscribe to our podcast and to rate and review us on iTunes. If you have questions or comments or want to continue the conversation, you can always join our Relationship Alive community Facebook group. And for more information about today's episode, visit us online at neilsatin.com slash podcast. Or you can always text the word passion, P-A-S-S-I-O-N, to the number 33444 for more information. Finally, do you have a burning question that you're hoping we can have answered here on Relationship Alive, either for a future or past guest? Let me know and I'll see what I can do. Take care and see you next time.